Look at those two words together, space sustainability. Uh, we see these tra trails of satellites going across the sky. They call them constellations of satellites, and that pisses me off. Mm. Because a constellation of stars that don't move across your sky, <laughs> they took our word mm -hmm. and caught naming their, their, their satellites after this. So, so there are thousands of satellites in the sky creating these streaks. Well, first, it's ugly to those who want to just bask in the majesty of the night sky. Plus, it makes further space commerce hard because space gets crowded. Then, and some, some satellites have been actively destroyed. Mm -hmm. China did it first. We did it second. Russia did it third. And... Okay, I didn't destroy your cell, I, I destroyed one of my own, but you saw it. No. I had the last interview with Professor Stephen Hawking, which was a memorable experience up at his, his study in Cambridge University. And I asked him about the threat of, from AI, artificial intelligence. There is a greater danger from artificial intelligence if we allow it to become self-designing, for then it can improve itself rapidly and we may lose control. Now, I'm reading more and more about the potential for AI to self-design. There's no reason to think that that won't happen. The question is, what minute will that occur? Because the moment it becomes self-aware uh, self and it can learn on its own, what, what did it he, will learn exponentially. What did he mean, Professor Hawking, by, by self-design? Well, well, just consider, how long do you go to school to learn how to read, write, and do arithmetic? Or lately, it just looks like people just read or <laughs> write, but no arithmetic. Mm. Uh, how long is that? You're in school for years and years. You remember the day when we used to dream about tomorrow, don't you? <laughs> you remember every week there'd be some article in the newspaper, in the magazine, the city of tomorrow, transportation of tomorrow, the kitchen of tomorrow. Anyone younger than 30 doesn't even know what tomorrow is. Whoever thought this up never took physics 101. But <laughs> this is a thermodynamically pointless exercise <laughs> because the only way you're going to get the body heat from those two people is if they are naked in your bed. <laughs> but for reasons of sanitation, they are not only fully clothed, they are fully insulated. If you're insulated, your heat is not coming out. It stays within all of your clothing, so they are not heating the bed <laughs> at all. If they did, then these two people would be naked. Sagan made a big point of this back in 1990 when he uh, talked about the pale blue dot. He convinced Voyager, but well, he convinced NASA to have Voyager when it passed Neptune, the last planet in the solar system, <laughs> to turn its, he, he convinced Voyager to turn its camera back towards Earth. And it was basically amounts to Earth's first ever selfie. And that picture was taken and there was these pale blue dots sitting in this void, and he wrote a whole book on this. So that pic these pictures from Saturn with Earth is, a, is the sort of the modern counterpart to the pale blue dots. Yes, to learn, no, Earth is not the middle of the universe, neither is the sun, neither is our galaxy, and you're small, you are you, in time and in space. This, that's all true. But the cosmic perspective takes a step beyond that, and it allows you to say, to realize that you know, the atoms in your body, the molecules that comprise life, are traceable to stars that manufactured those elements in their crucibles of their core, and then exploded, scattering that enrichment across the galaxy, enabling next generations of stars to form planets, and at least on one planet, life, and at least at this time, people. So we are, we are a participant in the great unfolding of this cosmic story. So people like to think I'm special because I'm different, but there's a whole other way to look at it. Maybe you're special because you're the same.